Good morning, everybody. It's our new and Sam with Cajun Couple Trucking, and today we're going to be talking about a little bit about cameras, a little bit about um, service failures, and a little bit about uh, uh, trip planning because I've had a couple questions about that. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back with you. Well, good morning. Uh, today is, what is today? It's July it's Friday. 14th. It's Friday. I think it's the 14th. It is the 14th. Okay. It's the 14th. And please uh, excuse us. We've been waiting a couple weeks. We wanted to get a camera mount. We went on this side. So we didn't have to move our other camera mount. And because um, I use it for GPS. And we wanted to get a mic that would pick up a little bit better with my wife sitting across the truck. So. As the intro says, we want to talk a little bit about a few things. We're trying not go, to go into too much depth in those. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about where we've been the last few days. Um, let's see. I'm going to just pull all these out. Let's see. We went up to Springfield to uh, see our daughter who just upgraded and got her own truck. And we were fortunately, we were there long enough that we could help her you know look over her truck and see the smile on her face and if you follow us on Facebook you've seen a picture of me by my truck and my daughter by her truck um, so we picked up that load uh, in Whiteville Virginia it was going to Edgerton Kansas but we dropped it off in Springfield uh, so that we could spend some time with our daughter we took her out to eat and had had a good time um, took a couple friends that that work out of Springfield out to eat too so we we had some fun um, then our next load out of there was from Cassville Missouri to Cheyenne Wyoming it was a Walmart load um, I think we got there like a day early and we had to wait a day to be able to deliver um, but that one yeah that one was the one that if we had run it straight out of the box 10 hours 10 hours drive 10 hour rest 10 hour drive 10 hour rest we would have been late to drop and that's one of the things that brought up the trip planning on the portion uh, on the trip planning portion because if you if you just take off and run hard sometimes you you'll hit that 14 hours and you're still an hour away uh, or something like that and you won't be able to get to the receiver and then our last load which is our our good pay load for this week um, push us over seven thousand gross seven thousand eighty one dollars gross uh, as a solo that's pretty good because my wife doesn't drive uh, went from Dodge City Kansas to Van Buren Michigan uh, that was a one pick three drop load and we could have dropped it a day and a half early but the middle drop the L3 uh, closed at 2 o'clock and so we there was no way we could drop because um, we dropped at the O2 uh, at about 11 and it was a four hour drive to the O3 uh, 11 in the morning so see we said we we're going to talk about cameras right yeah okay now We've been hearing a lot of talk about, oh, there's a possibility of interfacing, inward facing cameras. And uh, Rob has been testing along with a few VPs in their personal vehicles. And it tells them, it, it looks, it's got a camera that faces in, it watches your face, watches your eyes, and sees if you're attentive, if your eyes are moving, if your head's moving, um, is your head bobbing, is your seatbelt on correctly? I mean, it, it does a lot of things. Now, they say it doesn't record video, but we have seen in other YouTubers posts that uh, some of those versions do record video. And when there's an incident, it sends that video to your fleet manager. 
Uh, Rob is saying he's going to try not to have that. Well, um, the thing about, I don't know about my wife's opinion, but my personal opinion is, you know, inward facing camera or not, uh, what they're trying to do is what we should be trying to do as business owners is protect our investment. The best way to protect our investment is with these cameras. Um, <clears throat> I mean, he's trying to, his company more than likely is just CYA on his part, uh, on their part. Us, it's, it's CYA as well. I mean, if you think about it, if you get in an accident, someone cuts you off, hits the brakes. Okay, that's great. You have an outward facing camera. But some of these smart lawyers can turn that around on you. Well, he would have never, he would have never hit my client if he had noticed my client coming up on the side of him really fast. And he would have been prepared for my client to cut him off and brake checking. You know, he's the professional driver, not my client. And it's true. You know, I watch people, people brake check me almost daily, you know, and I can see them coming around. Now, if we had that inward facing camera and it saw our eyes moving, showed that we were attentive. That's going to negate what that what that attorney is trying to do and it's going to show. Um, now, some people say, oh, it's invading my privacy. Well, the whole thing is, is if you're undressing with your curtains open, you're just inviting anybody to look. I mean, we got huge windshield. We have huge side glasses. Uh, that is so we can see. If you're changing and not closing that curtain, that's you. And yeah, I know my TV's playing in the background. The dog loves to watch TV uh, while we're driving. Uh, and what do you think about it, babe? I mean, if you're not doing anything wrong, you really don't have anything to worry about. Right, and that's that's something else I wanted to bring up. These people that are always saying, "Oh, the inward facing," I'll quit. You know, I'm I believe you're doing something that you're ashamed of. Uh, you're doing something. I mean, I don't I don't care if it's as simple as picking your nose while you're driving. Uh, to you know, I don't know, taking a little nap, watching TV on your phone. I, I don't know. You know, with that lane departure, I've seen. You know, uh, I've passed by drivers who are watching movies on their phones. Um, now, uh, like I said, we just want to touch lightly on it. What was the second thing I said besides cameras? I would have had to pay attention. Um. <laughs> I know we were talking about trip planning, so I'll, I'll yes. go into that. Um, now, as I said, uh, I've had a couple people ask me about it. And, yes, I, I've done... Uh, Back in the 90s, whenever I drove, we didn't have, I mean, we had the Qualcomms, but we didn't have GPS. We didn't have anything. In fact, this was <laughs> this was our best friend. Um, and I, I, every once in a while, I still break this out. Not often, not often enough that my wife has actually seen me do it. <laughs> but we have Trucker Path on the phone. We have... The GPS on the Qualcomm. Now, what I'm talking about is when I got that Walmart load and I started looking at it and we were like, oh, we got two and a half days to make it. And it's, you know, it's only, was it 23 hours of driving? You know, um, I started looking at it and my wife's like, let's go. Let's, you know, let's go. Let's get going. Because she's like me. She. You know, she likes to be moving, especially when we have a load. Like right now, we're sitting because our load is not ready. And they told me it probably won't be ready till 7, between 7 and 9 tonight. We're only three hours away from it. And it's 11 o'clock right now. <clears throat> so we're waiting so that we can save some of our 14 to drive. Um, and that's what happened was, if I got in the truck and drove my 10 hours or even 11 hours, rested my 10 hours, drove again, rested, and then I would not have had time. My 14 on that day would have cut off an hour before I was supposed to be there. So I would have been able to drive an hour before I was supposed to be there, and I would have been about two or three hours away. So there was no way I could have done that. So it behooved me to wait, complete the 10 that I was on, which I was only about two hours away from completing, 
driving enough that I could, you know, that, that would help me. And I moved that 14 forward to where I could make that last little two hour drive, um, two hour part of the drive. Now, when we're talking about trip planning, most people plan from the shipper to the receiver. Uh, to, and that's where you're going to make a mistake on your 14, where you run out of hours on your 14, but you still have hours to drive and, or you have hours to drive, but you get there late because you're, you had to wait for that 10. So, uh, for your 14 to refresh. Um, so there's two ways you can do it. You can do split sleeper berth if you're comfortable with that. I don't like doing split sleeper berth because half the time it will, when I stop somewhere else, it moves my sleeper berth. It's not like with paper logs where I could tag split sleeper berth and then tag split sleeper berth where I wanted to complete it. Um, the Qualcomm does it automatically that, you know, the electronic logging device, the ELD, does it automatically, and we can't change that. Logs can't change that. Uh, we can notate it and hope that the officer won't give us a ticket. Uh, or we can do our trip planning from the receiver back to our shipper. Like right now, I have to, this one is, is a prime example, you know, I have to get this load down to Macon, Georgia by 10 a.m. on the 14th. Okay, it's a 17 hour drive, 17 hours worth of driving. Today, I'm sorry, the 16th. Okay, thank yeah, you. You're uh, by 10 a.m. on the 16th. So I got 17 hours of driving to do. I drive at 60 miles an hour. So let's say we got 18 hours of driving to do. Now I'm going to look at 10 a.m. I'm going to give myself a cushion. I'm going to say I want at least two hours to drive at 10 a.m., but I want to get there at 9. I'm adding an hour to 17, so it's 18 hours. So I'm going to start at 9 and count backwards. <clears throat> I'm actually going to start at 11 and count backwards because that gives me an extra hour past my time. So if they unload me quickly, I can still drive. And so I count backwards. My 10 hours so if I'm gonna get there at 11 in two days I count back 10 hours that's 1 a.m. I can start driving that day and that's 10 hours then from 1 a.m. I count back 10 hours to well I'm gonna go back a little bit further to I'm gonna come back to 2 o'clock because I got my 30 minute I got you know a lot of things I'm building a cushion in as I'm going. And so from 2 o'clock, <clears throat> I go back 10 hours. Okay, so 2 a.m., go back 10 hours, and what do you get, babe? Midnight is 2 hours. Midnight is 2 hours. Mm -hmm. Then you need eight more hours back. So you're going to be at 4. Right, 4 p.m. So 4 p.m. is where I need to start my 10-hour break. Okay, now... From 4 p.m., that's going to be on the 15th, 4 p.m. So at 4 p.m. on the 15th, I'm going to go back. Okay, now I've done my drive time. I've done my first 10-hour break. So at 4 p.m., I should be driving. If I go back 10 hours, you know, that's more than I need. I only need to go back 8 hours. And that's going to give me my starting point. From where I went, need to start driving. That's the last minute I need to start driving with my hour and a half cushion built in. Uh, if I want a two hour cushion, I build that in. But if you start at your receiver and build backwards, you should never be late. And I know it's difficult at first to do this and to figure it out. But once you figure it out, <clears throat> it's easy. It, it gets really easy. Time yes, time zones. You know, you do know if you're heading west, you're gaining time, basically. Not, not actually gaining time on your clock, but you're gaining time in, you know, I'm getting, I, I can build an hour cushion in without actually even needing to build one in. 
because I'm going to go from 4 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, and all of our delivery times, you know, all of our scheduled times are local times, not central time. Uh, and if you're heading east, you're losing an hour, so you need to build more time in, not for the driving, t- actual time that's on the uh, time of day. You know, so if you want a little bit more in depth, just leave a message at the bottom, and we'll uh, we'll do a more in depth where I actually write some things out and we we do things like that. Now, uh, while we're on that, a uh, little bit, a little bit more housekeeping is if y'all don't mind, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, comment. It helps us get higher in the algorithm, and you know, if it's helping you, you know, it can help other people too. Now, do you remember what the third thing we were wanting to talk about was? No, I don't. no <laughs> she doesn't. All right, um, let me think. Uh, we said, okay, the trip planning. We did the cameras. That was a third thing. There definitely was. Uh, I was keeping, I don't know. Oh, I mean, I should have wrote it down. I usually write it down. And the thing about it is, is I've gotten off my, you know, off my schedule. I haven't done my um, what makes us mad. You got a haircut. Yeah, I did get a haircut, as you can see. You know, um, she didn't do it where I could brush it back like I like, but you know, it, it is a lot better. And I did a little bit of trimming. I need to finish trimming and, and do stuff. I just did. I don't trust many people with my beard. You know, my grandchildren love my beard too much that <laughs> you know when I had when I worked security I had to chop it down to two inches and it was way down to the middle of my chest. My grandkids didn't like that. They still recognized me, they still loved me, but they didn't like that my beard was gone. Um, so, and the thing about it is, when we turn off the camera, we'll remember it. We will. That's, that's the bad thing. Um, it won't be bad. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to... Save know, it for the next one. Save it for the next one, yeah. But I usually have my book and my notes and ready to go, and you know, I, I've been faltering. And uh, I know I don't like to chop up and and edit a lot, so I try to do everything in one shot, which I hope y'all you know enjoy. And yet, that my wiring, I need to do something with my wiring back there a little bit. That's the wiring for my modem. Um, Gotta have so, internet. Yeah, especially whenever you try to keep the TV on to keep the dog satisfied. And she's back there sleeping right now. Uh, <laughs> I should turn it off, but the second I turn it off, she's going to wake up. Um, Just like a kid. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't think of it, and I know it's on the tip of my tongue. And, uh, you know, oh, goodness. No. Yeah. Well, we might have to go back and change the introduction. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, like as always comment subscribe and um, if you have any questions let us know if you want me to go deep into the you know pre-planning the trip planning and it's not always you don't always have to do this you know um, it's always good to look backwards but 98% of the time 98% of the time if you just get in your truck, run your hours out, run your hours out, run your hours out. You're going to wind up getting there a day or two ahead of time. Um, it's on the tight loads that you got to look at going backwards. Uh, because if you don't go backwards, you're going to wind up getting a service failure. Is that what I was talking about with service failures? Service failures. Service Yay. failures. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's one of the big causes for new drivers to get service failures is pre, you know, trip planning. Uh, you need to trip plan properly. Uh, and if you follow your Qualcomm for your fuel stops and all, you, you're going to get pretty much the best deals. Uh, there are some, some instances where it brings you off or brings you through a, um, uh, like a toll road to get to your fuel stops. Uh, in that case, you know, use your best judgment. 
because uh, I like to avoid toll roads. But uh, service failures, there really shouldn't be a reason for service failure. If you're on your trip planning, you know where you're going, you know where you know you know where you've been, and you constantly calculate. You look back at your plan. Did I make it to my stopping point that I wanted to stop at? Did I not make it? Uh, what happened? Uh, was there a traffic jam? Was there an accident? You should know hours, even days before that you're probably not going to make it. That's when you need to let your fleet manager know. And first thing he's going to do is, okay, keep me informed. That's what he's going to say. But he's going to look at your logs and see, do you have enough time to make it? Do you, do you not? If you don't, and you know you don't, let them know ahead of time. Say, I'm not going to make it because of this. And send it in a message through the Qualcomm or through the app so that they can get with sales and see if they can push it back. If they can't, then they will tell you, meet someone here. We're going to swap you loads, and a team's going to take it. That's better than getting a service failure. And I know people, <clears throat> especially lease drivers that I've talked to, are like, I mean, I don't give away a load. I don't, I don't do that, you know, because, you know, then they, then they cut my revenue. I'd rather have a cut revenue than a service failure. Uh, service failures are very, very serious, guys. They not only hurt you, but they hurt your whole fleet. Then in turn, they hurt, hurt the whole company because your, your value with the company is going to go down. Your fleet's value with the company is going to go down. And then the company's value with the customer is going to go down. You know, that's saying, okay, we gave you four days to make a three-day run, but your driver still couldn't make it. Yeah, you know, that is ridiculous. Uh, service failures. I have. I drove for two and a half years in the nineties. Uh, I drove hot shot for a year before I came back into Class A, and. Um, I've been here you know, since uh, February is what our, our daughter, we, we had a little argument about that, but I believe she's right. It was February um, that we came over and we started PSD in March that we got into our trainer's trucks and I've never had a service failure. Never, never had late pickup, never had late drop off. Never. Um, the key to Doing that is trip planning and communication. You have to communicate with your fleet manager. And your fleet manager is not here. You know, he's not trying to punish you. He's not trying to um, cut your revenue. He's not trying to do any of that. He's trying to help you. You know, so you need to, and there are, I mean, there are instances, we'll go over that in later videos, where, you know, if you've been doing wrong, I'm not going to say they're going to punish you, but you're not going to be on the top of their list to give valuable loads to. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But <clears throat> number one, trip planning. Number two, communication. If you do those two things, you should not have a service failure. Even if you break down, you should not have a service failure because you're going to give them enough time to let sales know so that they can get it fixed and move that appointment to where we don't have a service failure. Uh, prime example, my daughter's in her new truck. Her first load was to California. Good load. Her next load, she's going from California to Ohio. All right. Uh, actually, just a couple of miles from where we just dropped off in Ohio. And uh, she... You know, it was one of our drops in Ohio. But uh, she had her check engine light come on. She lost coolant. Uh, they had her pull in and have it checked out. They shut her down for about 13 hours. She had extra time. But she communicated with her driver manager, her fleet manager. And they <clears throat> communicated with sales. And so there's already a communication there just in case they didn't find anything wrong with their truck other than a sensor. Uh, and they think that she's good, you know, to drive. But if she does break down, 
there won't be a service failure, not on her part, not on anybody else's part, because that chain of command is already gone. That chain of information is already gone through. And they're looking at it, watching it, and expecting that if something happens, she's going to communicate with her fleet manager, who's going to communicate with sales, who's going to fix the problem. You know, so um, if you have any questions about anything we talked about, did you have any input on service failures? Just fix the problem before there's a problem. Yeah, and it's, it's not hard. And she she sees me doing all these things, and she sees and she and helps help. me. She helps me figure out, you know, because while she doesn't drive, it is a team effort. You know, she's on the truck. Her, her input's valuable. And sometimes she catches stuff that I didn't think of or that I missed, um, which is great. Look, driver right there playing on his phone as he's driving across the parking lot. Oh, my goodness. It it's an Amazon driver, too. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as always, guys, you know, if you have any questions, Leave a comment. I check comments daily. Even though I haven't been posting, uh, I have been checking my comments daily, responding to them and all. Um, and uh, I think that's it, huh? So that's it. Have we'll, a great day. We'll close out the video. As always, keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down, and your mirrors between the ditches. We'll catch you later.